Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world might persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jacob. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping it because of his hip. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm for you for today is 121. If we would uh, say it together, please. I lifted up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he will watch us so you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. From 
from this time forward. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy. As for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for the salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead? And in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, Endure suffering, do the work of the evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, he will find, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. 
meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know how you would respond to the question Jesus posed. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? What is your thought? Think about it. My answer is yes, because there is hope. Sometimes it seems like when he comes there will be no faith left, because we are dealing with a broken world that keeps, sometimes it seems, to be getting worse and worse and more scary. But I'm here to say that there is hope, there is good news, that yes, there will be faith when the Son of Man comes, that there is hope for me and for you and for everyone dealing with the brokenness in our world. Today's readings seem to support my point. In our Genesis story, we see Jacob, who was estranged from his family. There's a long story behind this passage we read. And he's on a journey toward reconciliation and restoration. In the Gospel story, we just read about the widow, the unnamed widow who was struggling, seeking justice from a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. But the point of, the, of these stories, plus the psalm, which tells us uh, about where help is to come from, is that there is hope. Things are not easy, but there is hope. The Christian message is an invitation for us to experience the healing power of God's love as well as help those who are struggling to seek to find healing and restoration. We are both beneficiaries of God's grace and agents of this healing and hope in the hearting world. Father Henry Nowen refers to us who are both wounded, but also helping other wounded as wounded healers. And the readings we read seem to support, to show us, uh, give us hints on how to do that. Jacob's story and the widow's story give us the hint and the psalm give us hints on how to experience the healing and restoration that we yearn for. Whereas St. Paul's letter to Timothy is giving us hints on how to help others experience the healing, overcome the brokenness. It is true that all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. So what are the lessons in 
these passages of scripture we just read and what are they teaching us? For me, it seems like there are at least five lessons. I'll go through each one of them quickly. But they all point to one thing, that the journey toward restoration from the, 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 the brokenness to healing and hope is a long one. It requires persistence, a long view perspective. Jesus said he, he was, that parable was meant to help the people not to lose heart. In the face of the brokenness we live in, it is so easy to lose heart. So what are the lessons? One, is that the journey toward healing and restoration begins with dissatisfaction of how things are and a deep longing for things to be better, for things as they should be. It begins with a longing for shalom. The story of Jacob demonstrates this. Jacob had been estranged from his family. It's a long story we will not repeat. And he was in exile, in a form of exile, but in exile he, he became wealthy. He was well off. But there continued to be this longing for reconciliation, for restoration of relationship with his family. So the part of the story we read he was on his way to meet his brother, to be reunited with his family. And as we read, it was a struggle. It was difficult. But he could not let things stay as they were. He longed for reconciliation, for healing. So with every one of us, Healing begin, the journey begins with dissatisfaction and longing for restoration. <laughs> Second lesson is that the journey toward healing begins with self-examination. While in most cases we find ourselves as victims of the brokenness, but more often, we have a role to play, both in the brokenness, but also in the restoration. So it, it begins, the journey toward restoration and healing begins with deep self-work. Jacob had to do this work to reflect on how he had gotten where he was and how things could get better. Third lesson is that the journey toward healing involves risk. It involves vulnerability. Because healing may not happen. You could be hurt. As you struggle, strive for better, for things to get better, there could be more hard. I will never forget a story of a young man who had been, uh, his father was out of his life for a long time. And when he became old, around his 20s, he traced his father and found him and decided to go meet his father. Sadly, things did not go well. He ended up being more hurt. So the journey toward healing is risky and involves vulnerability. There is the possibility that you could fail, that your efforts may not yield the results you need. And so 
That brings me to the fourth lesson. The journey toward healing is only possible with God's help through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the psalmist in our psalm today speaks to that. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? And he receives this revelation, the answer, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The author of Proverbs says in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. Other translations use the word understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. The journey towards healing is only possible with God's help. Fifth lesson is that the journey toward healing requires persistence. Both in the story of Jacob and in the story of the widow, we find persistence because it's never easy to mend the broken pieces of our lives. Jacob struggling with a man who turned out to be God or the angel of God said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Because he knew that the journey ahead was not going to be easy. The encounter with his brother if you have time, read the story. It's a powerful and beautiful story, but it was not easy. The widow had to persist and persist and come again and come again. I imagine that this judge who neither feared God or had respect for people, had discouraging words, perhaps abusive words, but this lady kept coming because she could not let things remain the way they were. She wanted justice, persistence. You may ask, why do we need to persist? I say it's because the brokenness in most cases is so deep and simple words of encouragement or simple logic will not do it. I think about the political and religious polarization, even in this nation. Simple logic may not work. It takes serious work of convincing, of persuading, of being of friendship and encouraging and patience. Listen to what St. Paul says to Timothy, proclaim the message. This is the message, especially of what, where you are acting as an agent of reconciliation, as an instrument of healing and hope, as you walk alongside and you're encouraging others to toward their healing and restoration. Proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience. Utmost patience. Because the pain, the heart, is deep in most cases of these broken uh, situations. St. Paul writing to Timothy goes on to say, to tell Timothy that he must understand what's going on. You must understand this, that in the last days, distressing times will come. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, unfeeling, implicable, slanderers, profligates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, 
lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That is what we are often dealing with. And for that, for healing to happen in that kind of context, it takes persistence with utmost patience. So my prayer for me and for you as we journey towards our own healing, because we are all broken, and as we walk alongside those who are broken and try to guide them, to support them on their journey of healing, how I pray that we will be persistent, that we will know that it is possible, that there is hope for healing and restoration. And there are many examples of healing when you hear of reconciled relationships, people estranged for many years coming together. Some of you may have stories of that. There is hope. So the message for us this morning is that there is hope. Yes, we live in a broken world, but there is hope. So let us continue on our own journeys of healing and let us continue encouraging others on their journeys. And that indeed is the calling for us as Christians. Thank you, Lord, for these encouraging words. Thank you for reminding us that even though we live in a broken world, there is hope. Healing and restoration is possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. How we pray, O oh God, that you give us the grace to persist, to pursue healing and restoration in favorable times and unfavorable times. We thank you for the signs of healing and restoration that are already happening and how we long to see more and more healing in our time, Lord. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. that I invite you to stand with me as you are able to, as we affirm what we believe according to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake was crucified and upon his fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. With all our heart.
and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks and pray for the worldwide church and its leaders, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Craig, our bishop, Samuel and Janice, our priests, Charlie, our deacon, and all other ministers, that they may to us, be to us effective examples in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We gave, give thanks and pray for the Reverends Charles Allison, Justin Holcomb, and Stacy Tafoya, who have been nominated as candidates to succeed Bishop Dewey. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide the process for the one you have chosen to lead our diocese into the future. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks and pray for our parish family, our clergy, our vestry, our ministry teams, our students, teachers, tutors, ministry partners, and all of our members and friends, that we may continue to grow into the vision of the warm, welcoming, Christ-centered community for all people to belong, blossom, and bless. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks and pray for all who continue to join us in our shared life and mission. Fill us all with your Holy Spirit that we may enrich each other's lives and together proclaim the good news of your love in this community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks and pray for the leaders of our nation, especially Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, mayors of cities, members of Congress, the judiciary, and all in authority, that they may strive for justice, peace, and the dignity of every human being. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks for your protection upon those who survived the ravages of Hurricane Ian, and pray that those who are affected may know the comfort that comes from you alone. We pray that by your providence, there will be enough resources for recovery and rebuilding efforts. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are afflicted and oppressed, the refugees, the homeless, the hungry, the prisoners and others, that they may be freed from oppression and their human needs be fulfilled. Give them their share of the dignity you confer on all your children. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray that a new birth of peace may come among all human families and nations, especially Ukraine, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti, and other areas where there is turmoil. And that hatred, violence, and war may cease Renew the spirit of hope in every human society and nation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the sick and suffering, especially Patty, Mary Ann, Ed, Debbie, McKenna, C Cesar, Brock, Bud, Thomas, Nikki, Jacob, Frankie, Leo, Deborah, Liz, and those listed in our bulletin, and all who care for them, that they may be restored to wholeness and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We give thanks and pray for all who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially, especially Barbara, Ron, Kenneth, and others, and those celebrating their anniversaries, that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for those whose lives are linked to ours, our families, friends, and neighbors, that being protected and free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. At this point, may add our intercessions of thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your masses, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and you will give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. O 
most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May be seated. Welcome again to the house of the Lord. As always, it's wonderful to gather in His name. Special welcome to those of you who are visiting. It's a great joy to have you with us this morning. We have a tradition here when God you introduced yourself from yesterday to the ladies. We have a tradition here when you are visiting, you get to tell us your name and where you're visiting from. My name is Cindy Edwards. I'm visiting from Madeira Beach, Florida, and I come up and see my cousin quite often. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. Do you have any other guests? I don't seem to see any. Welcome, welcome. I wish to call your attention to the announcements. Most of them are self-explanatory. And I would like to highlight one or two, all related to the upcoming golf tournament. Not tournament, golf benefit. I'm one of those who have supported the idea that we get rid of the idea of tournament. Because well, it's not a tournament, it's a fundraiser, it's a golf benefit. And yet I keep falling back to the old ways. <laughs> anyway, the good news is that we have uh, sold out the, all the spots for people who golf. So, uh, so if you are thinking you want to go off and you're waiting for last minute, sorry, you have to, sign, to be on the waiting list. Uh, but the opportunities to contribute to the effort are still open. And there are two, three that you can uh, take advantage of. One is to donate money. We are still accepting donations. Two is to uh, register to come and have lunch and enjoy the festivities because it will be quite a ceremony with baskets and uh, uh, tickets, all, all wonderful things uh, happening uh, with speeches from our students. It will be quite a, 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 a celebration. Third, you could buy a ticket to uh, Belk, Belk the, the, the store that sells clothes. Uh, we approached them uh, to help us to, be, to participate in what we are doing, and they said sure. And they gave us many tickets. We don't, uh, do we know even the number? <laughs> they, they, they said, if you sell them for five dollars each, each you keep the five dollars, and the person who buys them will come and claim claim the ticket, that credit, the five dollar credit, when they buy something on the twenty eighth, twenty ninth, or thirtieth. 
That's a great deal, I think. So if you love shopping, and they will be on sale, the, the belt will be on sale. So if you, you buy the ticket and take it to Belk that day, you you make a, the, you contribute to the school and don't lose anything. You earn perhaps gain more by getting something cheap. <laughs> so because it's a sale. So I think it's a win-win situation. So you can buy tickets from Judy and from me. I was supposed to sell mine yesterday, <laughs> but I didn't sell any. So, but since Judy is supposed to sell today, buy from Judy. If she runs out, then you can buy from me <laughs> and, uh, and tell your friends. Oh, by the way, there's another way you could help. You could take some tickets and sell them to your friend. You don't have to buy them yourself. You can take them to your friends and uh, sell them to them. So if you need some, tell, talk to Judy. Uh, morning, Judy, there are many Judys here. Judy Morning sitting at the back there. And uh, then you can help that effort. So we, we are looking forward to an exciting Saturday the 29th. All other announcements are self-explanatory. I don't think I need to talk about them. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for the promise of healing and restoration, but more so in intercession on our own behalf, on behalf of many that are going through the brokenness of their lives, that by God's grace we experience the healing and restoration that God offers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will perfect sacrifice for the whole world. In the night was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when I had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the 
power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.
signed to page 10 of our bulletin that I spread together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. You have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have sent us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.